You know, Goldie, this reminds me a lot of 2011. Uh, I was on a mandatory 10-year anniversary trip uh, during that lockout that uh, I, I was mandated to go on by, by my wife. And um, I had to be within 24 hours to get back. So I was checking in constantly. And it was one of these really funny things where, like, everybody was down, relaxed, but you have to be ready to go at a moment's notice. So um, it's a real, like, split feeling because, you know, take Mickey Loomis, for example, you worry about Sean Payton, and his wellness, and his family, and then once that's taken care of, like the task at hand is to try to win as many games as possible, manage your team. So it's a really weird feeling, and again, it reminds me of 2011 during the lockout, where you know you were off, but you had to be ready to go at a moment's notice. How about in terms of not being able to meet with free agents, not being able to work out the potential draftees? What challenges does that pose? So, Goldie, I put it into two buckets. One is there's three players I think in particular will be affected by this. Uh, on the pro side, it's Cam Newton and Javion Clowney, two obviously extremely talented players, two first pick overall uh, formerly, and both that have some injury history. And then, obviously, Tua Tagovailoa, the very talented quarterback Alabama. Th- those three players in particular would need to be evaluated by doctors, and you wouldn't want to make some of these – more significant transactions without having your doctor sign off on it. And then on the other hand, the other big impact is the pre-draft process. So um, I was fortunate enough to be part of a team that traded up for Darrell Revis. Darrell Revis was a late declaring junior who we didn't know a lot about. And after he came in for his pre-draft visit, that gave us the feeling and the comfort that we could go ahead and trade up for him. But without that, there's no way we would have done that. If you were actively working for an organization, what would your opinion have been? Should they should they have pushed back the draft? Well, I, I you know they want to keep business as usual. I understand that. Um, I just don't know how you could have a draft without at least three or four people in a room because if we're sitting there and we're on a team and we're picking tenth, we may be talking at picks eight and nine and also eleven and twelve, and then getting all that information of moving up, moving back, and then saying, okay, what's best for us. And without the, the ability to have three or four of us at a minimum in a room, I just don't know how you can do that. 